Mark from the States, Mark from the States, it's Mark. And he's from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are we doing today, Mark from the States? So, yes, I finally get to see this. Uh, I have not seen uh, this in full you know, only bits and clip, uh, bits and pieces of previous years. So, um, what an incredible shot this is. Uh, this is where they do trooping of the color, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it looks like this is where they kind of gather and get organized before they, uh, line up. Wow, that's cool. Uh, what a cool, cool shot. Hmm. Um. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for all your suggestions. It's been just amazing. And I'm. this is going to be a little long one because I want to see the whole arch or at least a good portion of it. I believe this does have some commentary, so hopefully they'll tell me who's who. Um, probably not going to even know who they are even after he tells me. There's so many different, uh, uh, different uh, regiments and uh, units and all that stuff. So, um, but it's going to be really cool to see. So I'm excited to see this. Thank you for coming along and watching and let's get into this. Horse Guards Parade in the heart of London, where the ceremony of Trooping the Color takes place each summer. But this morning, Remembrance Sunday, a place for veterans to come wow. and assemble before marching through Horse Guards Arch onto Whitehall for the march past. Horse Guards with St. James's Park, beyond it the trees turning autumnal yellow. Oh wow, there it's right there. The of government, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Oh, what a With cool the shot. Ukrainian flag flying there, the yellow strip you can see in this still morning on the right hand side there, and the Union flag at the far end. And then Westminster Abbey and the Houses of Parliament to the left, Elizabeth Tower with Big Ben, which at 11 o'clock will sound for the two minutes silence to remember the war dead. A slightly misty day, but a fine day, and as Queen Elizabeth herself once said, it's interesting how rarely there's bad weather on Remembrance Sunday. It was 70 years ago that as sovereign, she first laid a wreath on behalf of the nation and did so almost every year subsequently, latterly watching from a balcony though as the Prince of Wales laid a wreath on her behalf. And today, he'll be here for the first time in his own right as king leading the commemoration. Okay, we're going to move to the march past. This will all be edited out. Let's show us. We're going to play alternately. You may recognize sometimes the tunes coming through and humming to the sky. As the march. Yeah, I want to see it's all that. Part, being part of it in the, in the real. This is well, we're about to see it start, so thank you both thank you. very much for talking mm -hmm. to us. Thank you. Thank you. So the columns waiting to march off, and the bands, first of all, having to leave the hollow square. Look and at leave space for these holy, great holy. columns to come past. As the march past goes on, the bands of the foot guards and the Royal Marines and the Royal Air Force are going to play alternately. You may recognize sometimes the tunes coming through and humming to them, the songs from the Great War. They play, they'll always be in England, they play Colonel Bogey. It's a kind of cheerful music that they put on as these veterans, some of them on foot, some of them in wheelchairs, led 
Today, by the 16th 5th, the Queen's Royal Lance is there waiting. It's the centenary of their formation. Seventeenth, twenty-first, the so-called Death of Glory boys, who have a skull representing death in the words "or glory" underneath. Now, each of these contingents will have a reef layer and a leader, and the reef layer passes the reef to these officers standing beside the cenotaph, who take the reef place it at the bottom until there's a great garden of reeds around the cenotaph. The 1721st Lancers, incidentally, which Winston Churchill as a 23-year-old joined, and Douglas Hay as well. The Royal Lancers, the Queen Elizabeth's own, Lifeguards Association, the senior regiment in the British Army that was formed back in the 1650s. I don't want to give the impression this is a military parade. This is not a military parade. As you'll see as it goes on, the people taking part in it are here because they fought together. The Blues and Royals Association there, um, formed by the amalgamation of the Royal Horse Guards and the First Royal Dragoons to arm and reconnaissance work. And behind them, the 3rd Regiment of the Royal Horse Artillery passed and present members. But when I say this is not a military parade, as this march pass goes on, it's actually people who fought together. It's not set up by the Army or the Navy or the Air Force. It's people who fought together and discover as it goes on groups of people who happen to be in a particular theater of war or have a particular skill and who know each other and who are here to remember what they've done. The Reconnaissance Corps here, Intelligence and Combat Force, for instance, formed in 1941 and uh, were responsible for telling the RAF and Bomber Command what was going on in the air and many Veterans have died in the pandemic. They're represented often by their children here. It's a long way to Tipperary. I said there'd be this kind of music played, and there it goes. The Royal Engineers, the Sappers. Are slogan is ubiqui, meaning everywhere. They were based on the sappers who dug trenches in the First World War so that mines could be laid. Behind them, the airborne engineers made up of members of the Corps of Royal Engineers. Association dating back to the Blitz in 1940 when they had to cope, of course, with the results of bombs being dropped at first in Orkney in October 39. The Army Air Corps Association, the King himself and the Prince of Wales, Luke and Sussex, all qualified as Army Air Corps pilots. It's the combat arm of the British Army. The Royal G 
logistic core made up of everything that supports the army. It includes transport, ordnance, catering, pioneers, and even the postal and courier branch, the Royal Logistic Corps Association. It really keeps the army going. Eighty of their members here today on parade. This is so wonderful. Just. Chelsea pensioner marching there among that group, meaning that he has given up his army pension to live in the Royal Hospital Chelsea with other members retired from the armed services. Pioneer Corps, which were a huge part of the army at the end of the Second World War. In fact, I think it was said that one in six soldiers was a pioneer, doing all the armed labor, laying the Pluto fuel line, guarding prisoners and moving stores. The all important Corps behind them. The ammunition technicians here, responsible for the safety of explosives and ordnance. The physical training corps of the army. They were given the title royal in their 150th year. Among them were Portland's veteran of the 3rd Battalion parachute brigade. The Women's Royal Army Corps Association laying wreaths on behalf of the Land Army and the Timber Corps, the ATS or the ATS, which the late Queen served in as a 16-year-old during the Second World War. The glider pilot regiment and Brian Latham there, who we heard from in the film a moment ago. Who landed a glider during those operations, Pegasus Bridge and Market Garden and Operation Varsity in 1944 and 5. Wow. The crossing of the Rhine. You must be thrilled to be here today. That's cool. The British Limbless Servicemen's Association. <laughs> Lesma. That's so cool. It's their 90th anniversary. Oh, look at that. And the Royal Hospital Chelsea. Has both 
men and women have retired from the services who live out their lives having given up their pension and living in a way on in a military lifestyle it's run like a, a very benign barracks and has as you can see women members as well as men now Carol Knight who was in the Women's Royal Army Corps she became a pensioner in 2021 with Liz McConaughey, who is uh, here taking part in the March Pass for the first time. You served in the RAF, but you're marching with MERT, the Medical Emergency Response Team. Yeah, Because right. you were flying the Chinook helicopters, weren't you, with the, some of the most seriously injured. You wanted to come last year. Why didn't you? So about four days before the parade last year, I just had an overwhelming feeling of uh, emotion and sort of PTSD caught up with me and anxiety and pulled out. And it's a bucket list I've always wanted to do and just couldn't find myself to come last year. So it's really nice to be here this year. You did an amazing number of tours. You served in Afghanistan ten on ten tours. Didn't yeah, wow. so I did ten up, ten up parrots throughout my career. Um, all in the Chinook fleet and we would deploy for three months at a time so we went every year from 2005 onwards. And you were rescuing some of the most seriously injured. It must have been very, very harrowing work for you. Yeah, I mean I always have it as the highs and the lows of my career because it was some of the best, you know, the, the, most, the biggest privilege of my career being able to fly on the march but it was also, I saw some pretty traumatic things when we were doing it so it's really good to be here today. Who do you think of? Out. Who do you think of on, on this day? So I think uh, today is really, for, from my point of view, about the collective loss that the Chinook fleet kind of witnessed when we were out in Herrick because we saw every single soldier that injured or paid the ultimate price come off the battlefield. So for me, it's that collective number of, of injured soldiers and, and uh, yeah, that's always what my thoughts are going to be. And here you are for the first time. I mean, the camaraderie, the applause, yeah. the support for, for veterans like you is wonderful, isn't it? It is amazing and I'm so glad I made it this year and I think there's going to be so many veterans watching at home who, a bit like me last year, couldn't bring themselves to be here and couldn't leave the safety of their own homes. And I think it's really important, you know, if you can go out and kind of join in on a day like today, it's really important. Well, I'm going to let you go and take part in the March Pass. Listen, okay. Bonnie, thank you very much. Thank you. Ten times. Wow. The Women's Royal Air Force Association in their tartan kilts. Their job maintaining aircraft and motor vehicles and dealing with meteorology and radar and communications and codes and ciphers and all the rest. Of course, now they serve in every arm of the Royal Air Force as pilots, navigators, whatever. But Back in World War II, women's roles were restricted. The RAF Linguists Association, involved in military signals intelligence and speaking every language you could think of, Russian and Polish and German and Czech and Spanish and French and Chinese and Arabic and Pashto and Farsi. The Linguists Association formed in 1990 as an organization, a specialist group with special abilities. The Air, Sea, Rescue and Marine craft with their roll neck sweaters, which they wore as standard while at sea, whose job was to rescue pilots when planes ditched in the channel of the North Sea. They thought to have rescued something like 13,000 aircrew and civilians by the Royal Air Force Movements Association, which are responsible for all the things that in civilian life is done at an air terminal, moving freight and loading the planes and all the rest of it. And very much involved they were in the evacuation from Afghanistan. Observer Corps Association. The job was to report the movement of hostile and friendly aircraft and 
invaluable during the Battle of Britain, tracking German aircraft coming over Britain, uh, which was when they were given the title that's much coveted by these various parts of the armed services have been called Royal. Wow, Royal look at all the wreaths. Cool. They stood down in 1995. That's awesome. Loadmasters who worked with the huge Chinook helicopter led by a veteran of the Falklands War. Their job involving everything to do with delivery of equipment and weapons to the front and the repatriation of people injured. They worked very closely with the aeromedical teams in Afghanistan. Parachute jumping instructors here, the Canopy Club Association, who taught parachute jumping. And their members on parade here today have fought in the Falklands and in the Gulf and in Iraq. Done over 25,000 jumps between them. The Royal Air Force Association Armors Branch, led by Jeff Ashmore is actually wearing his father's medals, I think, probably on his right chest. And the wreath carried by a Falklands veteran who is mentioned in dispatches. And followed by the Apprentice and Boy Entrance Associations of the Federation of the, of the Royal Air Force. Apprenticeships which brought 15 year olds into training, many decorated for gallantry in the Second World War, many killed in bomber command. They included um, Sir Frank Whittle, who pioneered the modern jet engine, it also included Cliff Mitchellmore, some of you may remember from earlier years of the BBC, he was an apprentice. Airfield construction, which is obviously a key job of repairing, extending runways, and Jim Stoner, one of the those on parade here today, 96-year-old, actually came across from Australia to be here. Construction branch, one of the largest units in the Royal Air Force. One Squadron Association. And the scarves of the South Atlantic Medal, by the way, the blue, green, and white, the same color as the South Atlantic Medal, and many veterans of the Falklands have these knitted scarves that they wear as well. The Squadron Association, first time they are marching here at the cemetery. to leave Afghanistan. South Atlantic Medical, Medal, Medal Association, everyone who fought in the Balkans War on this 40th anniversary. Apparently wearing these scarves. Commando Veterans Association with the Green Beret. Commanders bury, of course, one of the most sought after berries in the three services. Originally fought in the Boer War. That was the gave them gave the British the idea of having commanders, because the Boers had commanders who did the most dangerous and daring jobs, and the idea was adopted way back over a hundred years ago.
Widows Association, led by Janet Fuchs, their president, Baroness Fuchs. And their role is to try and improve conditions for war widows and widowers. They laid a wreath Very cool. on Saturday because originally they weren't allowed to march here on the Sunday of Remembrance Sunday. Their oh. wreaths would be taken away for some extraordinary reason. But now they are allowed to take part, but they don't carry a wreath. They lay that on the Saturday. Strange story. Yeah. The British Nuclear Test Veterans Association veterans ah. being remembered by the families of those who died from the effects of nuclear testing. Behind them, the King's Bodyguard of the Yeoman of the Guard. Not in ceremonial dress here, the oldest of the royal bodyguards they are. They're now the king's body, they were the queen's body, the yeoman of the guard, the oldest of the royal bodyguards, created by Henry VII way back in 1485. Wow. They still, in their uniforms, do that search of the House of Commons before the state opening of Parliament. made up, incidentally, of former serving officers or serving uh, men who had a clean record and after 22 years service in the services can apply to join. Well, I want to know about these guys right here. Digging the vest. This is Fighting with Pride, an organization that was founded in 2020 to represent those who were forcibly dismissed from the services because they were part of the LGBT plus community and one way or another because of their sexuality were thrown out of the services which no longer happens and they march to allow veterans of that dismissal to appear here along with everybody else fighting with pride Not, of course, identifying everybody who's on parade here. There are far too many contingents, but I'm just hoping to give you a hint of the kind of makeup of it. I mean, the main point here is not who they are or where they come from, but actually that they are here and they've chosen to come to remember the service they or their families gave in war. When they march past the cenotaph, they come back round for a salute, which is taken this year by the Earl of Wessex, who has with him on his right there the Secretary of Defence, Ben Wallace, talking there, and the National President of the British Legion, Charles Byrne. So this is okay. a march past not just of the cenotaph itself and the laying of the wreath, but a proper march past 
member of the royal family on horse guards afterwards. Oh, wow, look at those Kazirat guys. Has about 200 members, casualty evacuation for those seriously wounded in combat, as you can see. Wow. Very touching sight of amazing courage and recovery. It includes amputees and double amputees and even a triple amputee with blast injuries in Afghanistan. Followed by the medical emergency response team, that's a team of medical professionals who flew during the Afghanistan conflict on Chinooks with Liz McConaughey there, just on the right, who Aww. Sophie was talking to a moment ago. Good. You'll probably recognize this song. I won't sing the lyrics to you, but I'm sure you know them well. Metropolitan Police Armed Forces Veterans Association. Then the Trucial Omen Scouts with their red and white headdresses who fought with the United Arab in the United Arab Emirates during the 60s and early 70s. Wow. Under the Grenadier Guards there who are leading the next group in the parade. And the blind veterans here. Oh, that's cool. 1915 to support the many, many people who lost their sight in that war. Among those marching, Terry Bullingham. That's so cool. Who was hit by a cannon shell from a Mirage jet, left him completely blind. And Margaret Wilson, who's 99, the oldest blind veteran marching this year. Merchant Navy Association with their huge white anchor, Viv Foster, their national president. It represents over 50,000 merchant seafarers who died, and it's impossible to underestimate the importance of the Merchant Navy, particularly in the Second World War when supplies to Britain were coming across the Atlantic. And again, they served in the Falklands, the Atlantic conveyor, which was a tanker converted to a helicopter and airplane carrier, and which was sunk. But the Merchant Navy, who have their own red duster hanging on the cenotaph on the other side, you can't see it from this side, the only non-service organization had to be represented by its flag at the cenotaph. Here is the HMS Argonaut Association, again remembering the 40th anniversary of the Falklands War. The Argonaut was attacked, received two direct hits, which mercifully failed to explode, but not before killing two members of the crew. HMS Andromeda also during the Falklands conflict, 
I had six members here wearing those scarves again, the metal ribbon colors of blue and white and green. Veterans are all returning here to Horse Guards Parade now, and, and an amazing atmosphere. Huge rounds of applause for all of them as they as they come back. I'm joined by Stephen Henry, who you serve the Royal Logistics Corps. You've only just left the army. That that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm glad I, I watched the the whole thing. It was just. I mean, there's so many, so many different groups that they had there. It was just seeing the pride on all their faces as they're, no matter how old they were, whether they were walking or being pushed. I mean, just incredible. Absolutely incredible. It, it went, went an awesome, awesome thing. I, I just think that's... So great, I really do. Whew. Just like I'm just blown away by the size of how many there were. It's it's an it's amazing, and uh, yeah, so happy to actually watch it. Um, I hope everybody is happy, healthy, and safe. This has um, been such a long three weeks it's just really kind of the build up to the whole event and then the actual event was so whoo you know so uh, it's like you need some like downtime just afterward because of just the emotional roller coaster it, it takes you on at least for me it did and and I I admit I'm I I get emotional so it was just toying with me just up and down and just pulling me left and right it's <laughs> so yeah wow thanks for coming along and watching with me if you are there I really really appreciate it thank you so much and uh, yeah we're gonna just be doing uh, more of what you're asking for really um, so stick around. I hope that you come back and keep watching. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Mark from the States. Mark from the States. It's Mark. And he's from.